I'm excited to be here. This is my first time in Nashville. Howdy. <laughs> Little mini Pearl shout out for you there. Uh, it's great to be here. I was chatting with the governor backstage and I asked him, I said, which gig is better, politics or show business? And he went, show business. At least I don't have to run for this office every few years. I, I don't know how people run for president. It is, I, I tell you, I can't even watch people running for president anymore. It's exhausting with all the debates and those, oh, those crazy campaign commercials every two minutes. They keep getting nuttier and nuttier. It's like, in 1994, Joe Biden had a love affair with a chihuahua. Is this the kind of man you want as your president? This message sponsored by the people who love chihuahuas. <laughs> There's... I'll tell you, I'm surprised they don't enforce the same law for the campaign commercials that they do for the prescription medication commercials, where halfway through they have to include a disclaimer listing the side effects of all the crap that might go wrong if you vote for that candidate. Wouldn't that be so helpful? <laughs> Instead of hearing, hi, I'm so-and-so and I approve this message, no, I'd rather hear, if you vote for this candidate, you may experience bouts of upset stomach, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, rash, chills, fever, swelling of the tongue or throat, higher taxes, a deficit, depression, nightmares, thoughts of suicide, increased bowel movements, or need to have them and it'll need to control them. If you have an election that lasts more than four hours, be sure to call your congressman immediately. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we can do it. And while we're at it, we should revamp the entire electoral process, because it already is an 18-month reality show. Why don't we shorten it to 13 weeks and put it on network TV for a couple hours a week? Wouldn't that make more sense? Call it, like, Presidential Idol or America's Got Candidates, something like that. <laughs> Primaries would be so simple. Candidates would come out, they get two minutes to give a speech, and when they're done, they'd have to get critiqued and voted on by the panel of celebrity judges. Wouldn't that be a fun show? Bernie Sanders comes out, you get Chris Wallace from Fox News moderating. Senator Sanders is a Jewish person running for office. If you're elected president, would you continue the tradition of the Easter egg hunt on the White House lawn? And then Bernie Sanders comes out and says, I, I, I am of course Jewish, Chris, but I'd have no religious objection to the Easter egg hunt on the White House lawn. I would, however, take objection that I'm 75 years old and I do not like it when kids play on my lawn. And as soon as he's finished, you'd have Simon Cowell sitting going, you know what I like about you, Bernie? You look like you belong in a nursing home talking to plants, but you're actually quite brilliant. It's a yes from me, you're off to Washington. Wouldn't that be a great show? <laughs> and bring back all the different reality show judges each week. Bring back that guy I always liked from Project Runway, Tim Gunn. Be like, now let's make it work, people. Or bring back Howard Stern. He'd be funny. He was a judge on AGT. Oh, he'd be like, uh, let me tell you something, Bertie. You got like the hottest body. What are you, like a C cup? That would be. I think we're outing a few Howard Stern fans. <laughs> but the best judge in the world, and the only person in the world who qualifies as a TV reality show judge and as a candidate for office, would be Donald Trump, which means technically he'd be allowed to judge himself. How fun would that be to watch? Right? <laughs> We are gonna make America so great again, folks. I promise you, I promise you. You're a loser, you're a disaster, you're a terrible person, nobody likes you. I can watch an hour of that a week and be thoroughly entertained. <laughs> but as I say, it's hard to be president because no matter what you do, 50% of the people are gonna find something wrong with it, right? And then you got comedians like me trying to find things funny. Like a couple weeks ago, a uh, president was getting some heat from folks for saying things that could be perceived as culturally insensitive. But, funny thing I've noticed, most of the time, he says them as a compliment. Case in point, Chinese trade deal. The Chinese people laugh at us because they're making terrible deals, some of like the worst deals I've ever seen. And the Chinese people, and I love the Chinese people, by the way. They're wonderful people, the Chinese people. They do my shirts, the fantastic people. And they make those egg rolls. I love those egg rolls with that duck sauce. Now that's a great sauce. That really is a great sauce. And they're great little wall builders, those Chinamen, did you know? They built some great, great walls there in China. But we're gonna build a greater one. We're gonna build the Great Wall of Trump. It's gonna have a casino, a golf course, two hotels. Mike Huckabee's gonna pay for it. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> Thank you.
But here's an example of some of the terrible deals. Every major city in our country is a Chinatown, right? Everywhere you go, we have a Chinatown. I went to five cities in China, they don't have one America town. You see what I mean, folks? This is Obama's fault, people. But we're gonna fix it, I promise you we're gonna fix it. You know what else we're gonna fix in the trade deal now that I'm president? You know what we call our fancy dishes in this country? China, our fancy dishes are called China. Now that I'm president, I promise you, Chinese people will have to call their fancy dishes America. Let's make it great or you're fired. Thank you everybody, a pleasure. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, Stephen, I gave you a standing ovation, just oh, like Simon thank Cowell. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That was Double the funny. From you. Thank you. And I love it that you, uh, you're an equal opportunity offender. I mean, you go after <laughs> Democrats, Republicans, and even the host of this show. Oh, it's, hardly, uh, hardly. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I subscribe to the Johnny Carson School of Thought, which is what you can talk about politics as long as you don't take sides because ostensibly you alienate half your audience. Yeah. I don't want to alienate everybody. I want to make everybody laugh. So that's why I, I try and pick on the things. Like if I've done my job well, you shouldn't know if I'm a Republican, Democrat, or Independent, because it doesn't matter. What matters is making things funny that we see every day. I understand one of the things you've said is that you now get paid for doing what got you in trouble when you were in school. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> for all those teachers who said to me, you're not going to amount to anything, making those silly jokes, wrong. <laughs> Hi, all my teachers. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think that's got to be the coolest thing in it the is. world, to, to have been that kid that was a cut up in class yeah. and uh, probably constantly sitting up at the teacher's desk, which was the dumbest thing the teacher could do, <laughs> putting you up front where you could entertain the entire class. I always say I might have been the class clown if I actually went to class. <laughs> <laughs> now, I understand, though, uh, your dad was a... Uh, Sportscaster? Is a newscaster in New York. Newscaster. Still is. Still is. God bless him working hard. And uh, yeah, it's, it's people always ask me, what's it like having a newscaster as a dad? You know when it's bad? When you're a little kid and you get in trouble and you got to get yelled at or scolded by someone who has a newscaster voice? It puts the fear of God into you. Oh yeah. Especially if my, I was so bad that my mom would have to call him up at work. And you'd be in that newscaster and be like, ah, your mother just told me what you did. Well, you're in a lot of trouble, mister, and you're going to get it when I get home. Tonight at 11. You know, it's like... <laughs> and now back to you, Joan. <laughs> Stephen, we love having you here. A pleasure, Governor. Will you come back and I be with us again? I would be more than happy to. Absolutely. Well, we love you. This audience loves you. <laughs> Clearly, they are your fans. Thank you. For videos, tour dates, and a lot more from the amazing Stephen Scott, visit his website, stephenscott.tv. You can also follow him on Facebook at Stephen Scott Fan Page and Instagram and Twitter at Stephen Scott, L-O-L.